Have you ever loved your pet so much you would defy God to keep them around? We'll talk about it. Also, companies that you can pay $50,000 to clone your pet are also moving into bringing back extinct animals. And yeah, the last Sumatran rhino in Malaysia has perished. Now, there is the long-standing problem that when you clone an animal, its offspring age rapidly because their telomeres are still shortened because they came from an adult animal that has aged. That problem has largely been solved. You can create an induced pluripotent stem cell that is essentially juvenile in nature. Will people use that technique to infuse themselves with juvenile clone cells? Probably. But you're also pretty likely to give yourself cancer that way. People have tried. Now, something about raising your puppy while the adult puppy that you cloned is still around kind of gives me the creeps. Owners say that they do this so that they can bond. Now, much like IVF, you do have to try a lot of times in order to get something functional. In fact, roughly 98% of the attempts don't work. That's how a man ended up with twins, two cloned dogs that he's raising alongside their genetic mother. Now, the process of cloning is a little bit hit or miss. When you are naturally born, there's a lot of epigenetic programming that goes into making you. If you simply take an adult cell and then try to revert it back into the embryonic stage, it gets a little weird. The man who cloned his puppies does say that they're different sizes and they act quite a bit different. Epigenetics can express itself very differently. That's why you can have identical twins that have different conditions and different behaviors. Now, I personally think that cloning your pet is the height of having too much money. There are shelters that are full of cats and dogs that need homes, but if you really want to spend $50,000, you can attempt to clone your animal. What's also coming out of this is the cloning of endangered and extinct critters. The extinction of the Sumatran rhino is incredibly new. The last one perished in 2019, and there's still a chance to bring it back using IVF. And that project is riding the coattails of the first successful in vitro fertilization of a white rhino, another functionally extinct animal, there's just a few left on Earth. Well, there are no males left either, so it's going to rely on previous samples. Rhinos are remarkably hard to give IVF. Unfortunately, the pregnant mother expired of a different unrelated condition, but we do still have hope for our last woolly rhinos. Companies are also trying to bring back the woolly mammoth, although I'm pretty skeptical on that one. Much like rhinos, elephant reproduction is very complicated. Aside from not having a host, the best we could hope for and what many companies like Colossal are trying to do is create something that is just a furry elephant. Which is great if elephants weren't struggling everywhere. Not to mention if you really want to make a woolly elephant, I've seen some scientists say that we could drop them in Siberia, but they wouldn't have the history there. They wouldn't have mothers to teach them how to behave. I'm told that elephants and mammoths likely behave roughly the same. It just seems unkind. I'm a molecular biologist, not an ecologist or a zoologist. While I do trust my colleagues, I'm just very skeptical on the idea of bringing back extinct animals that haven't been on Earth in quite some time. Although we do have a success story. A Pawalski's horse has been cloned. They're a critically endangered horse. They are the last wild horses on Earth. And while zoology is full of sad stories, I'm pretty happy that these guys are still around. And the black-footed ferret. Humans have successfully cloned them and brought them back from the brink of extinction, so it's not all bad news all around. Unfortunately for our rhino friends, if we brought them back, they would be hunted to extinction very quickly. There's less than 80 on the planet. They're entirely extinct in Malaysia. And the same with mammoths. If you brought them back, if you released them into the wild and established permanent populations beyond all of the odds, how quickly do you think it's going to take for people to hunt them to extinction? Look, I might be misanthropic, but I'm misanthropic for a reason. This is the reason that I'm hoping for our robot overlords to inherit the Earth.